What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the past week. If you enjoy the Scale News Update, typically hit the like button now. It's a busy week of news, a ton of stories. Let's jump into it. First for this week, Element released another version of the Enduro. This is the Enduro Sendero. Again, one that we've seen many times before, but now it gets the you know, scratch and sniff black version of the paint. This is a body that they've painted on the inside and outside. The outside, you can scratch away the black paint to weather it yourself. Uh, they've done this on the Ecto and the Trail Walker, and now you get it on this one. So if you like, you can weather it yourself or you can let the terrain naturally weather it as you beat on this truck. If you're interested in this, the price on it is appealing, not too far over that $300 mark. The specs on it, pretty much the same as what you've seen before, but it's not like the SE platform where it gets the forward motor and the inner fenders. It's the, you know, better, but still kind of stripped down, higher spec version, you know. So you won't see an interior, you won't see inner fenders or forward motor, but you'll get bearings, bonus points. So check that out, linked in the description below. Next, new-ish from RC Foil Drive as well, we've got the K10 Scottsdale Edition. This is the blazer front half of the body, but now with an injection molded bed to give you that K10 look. Good looking option overall, and of course this will be available as a body set in case you don't wanna buy the whole TF2 RTR version. But if you like the full body K10 pickup in a hard body, this is a pretty easy choice. The TF2 underneath, of course unchanged, just like you've seen before. Leaf sprung suspension all the way around. If you want an American pickup though, in a hard body one tenth scale, this is probably your best option. Go check that thing out. Primal RC put out a teaser this week and in their little teaser video they put out, they kind of showed their progression going from a you know rail style gas dragster to the monster trucks and now the little screenshot that they show in the video seems to show these halo style headlights that to me looks like Dodge Challenger. If I was to guess, that's what I would imagine they're going for. And presumably then we're looking at something large scale on-road gas powered from them. Be interesting to see. I think we're only about a week away from seeing the full details on this. So we'll cover it again once we have the full details. Put your guesses below though. We'll see. I. It, just, it looks awfully challenger to me. I don't know what else has those like slightly hidden halo style lights, but put your guesses below. We'll see which one of us is correct. Speaking of K10s, the Proline 1982 K10 body that we recently saw on the Axial SCX3 release is now available separately. This is a body that is licensed or labeled as a Proline body, but came on the Axial kits. Axial starting to leverage more and more of the Proline name and parts onto their actual kits. This one labeled as a Proline body, but came on the kit. Now, presumably this body is being made overseas, but with a Proline name. Most, or as far as I know before, all Proline bodies were made here in the US, but some of these like this one now must be being made overseas and just getting the Proline name, likely designed or whatnot by Proline. But being that it likely does come from overseas also means that we're getting all the injection molded details like the grill and side mirrors, as well as the chrome front and rear bumpers. So the full package for this body. If you liked it before, but didn't want to buy another SCX3 base camp, now you can get it on its own. Speaking of challengers earlier, Protoform released the 1 7 scale SRT Demon body for that Arma platform that I like so much. Great looking body, great proportions, and a perfectly fitting body for that platform. Made to just be reckless and smoking tires. It couldn't be a better fitting body option than a Challenger. We got the full details on those Toyo RT tires from Proline also. These are a 4.75 Toyo Open Country RT. So they're not the MT or AT, but an RT. They got a nice square profile to them. The tread blocks are fairly close together, not super deep. So depending on what your terrain is, these could work better than some or not quite as good if you know, you're in loose or you know, muddy terrain. But they look great, another good option to have. 475, super popular size, so expected to probably sell pretty well. 
This one just missed the news last week, but FMS released a new 112 scale Series 2 Land Rover. I believe that this is coming on basically the same platform as the Jimny, I think. It's got the same underhood electronics area where you put the front battery and all of the electronic switches are housed. Underneath these have a fairly realistic looking drivetrain and inside this a very detailed interior. The top is removable and it looks just like a Series 2, which opinions may vary on the appeal that that body style has. Coming in three colors, yellow, green, and blue. These list for $199 and they do come with a four channel radio with all kinds of control. You actually get a lot for your money, but just in a smaller package. Sometimes that size is a bit of a deterrent because you know, it, it's not quite as capable as the 110 scale stuff, but it's too big for guys who like the 124 scale side more. A little bit of an odd area, but $199 four channels, light control, detailed scale, drivetrain and interior. It's going to appeal to many. Raytheon is teasing this new 934 Porsche. Raytheon also traction hobbies kind of go hand in hand with each other, uh, but not seeing any details on it yet. Don't know what kind of drivetrain we're getting or what the body is being made out of, how detailed we'll see of this, but those renderings and saying that information will be out in August means that we probably don't have to wait too long to get an idea of what we're actually going to see. Could be cool. Traction Hobbies has done nice things in the past. We've seen hard bodies from them more than once. So maybe we're going to see a 10th scale or possibly larger 934 Porsche. Traction Hobbies is known for doing larger scale stuff. I'm interested to see this. Love me a Porsche. While looking for new things added to the site, I ran across this one. This is just the Losi Promoto driver figure product page replacement. But just with how they have it placed, <laughs> I don't know why it looked so comical to me. But if you own a Promoto and you drive it on a lot of pavement, like I have so far with mine, you're likely going to need one of these. Those drivers, riders, whatever, they get pretty beat up on the pavement. Mine looks like he has had much better days. At the bare minimum, I'm gonna need a new jersey here very soon because it looks pretty tattered. So if you need those, those parts are in stock already as, long, as well as all of the rest of the replacement parts for the Promoto. So no fear there. I know there was some delays with shipping of the, the green version and all that, but it appears that that rollout other than that has been fairly smooth beyond the whole like back end issue that Horizon's been having with their website. But beyond that, the vehicle itself, parts availability seems to be doing pretty well. J Concepts just hit us with four new 1.0 tire options. First, we've got the Ruptures and the Scorpios. These are like straight up performance minded tires. The Ruptures and the 1.9 are highly capable, just like straight performance tires, not so much on the scale side, but straight performance. And you know, that will be what their goal is with these as well. They're 63 millimeters tall on both the Ruptures and Scorpio. If you've liked either of those tires in the 1.9 size or 2.2 size, then might be worth checking out if you've got some 1.0s. After that, they also released the, the holds. It's called the hold. So they're the, the holds. I, I don't know how you're supposed to say that. And some mini fling kings. Well, not super mini. Uh, these are also both 63 millimeters tall. So good size 1.0 tires. If you like to take your 124 scales in the mud, Fling Kings would be, you know, the tire for you. I can't, I wonder how many people are mudding 124 scales. That seems like just a recipe for disaster. You know, if you've got brushless in there, if you run an outrunner, probably not a great idea. If you're running the brush, I have to imagine they'd be a little under... If you, if you own 124 scales, are you hitting mud with them? I want to know if there's anybody out there doing that. I get that these tires still look good. No denying that. I would own them and still never take them in the mud. For those of you with an appreciation of the vintage side, Kyosho has a Joel Johnson replica 1981 Ultima release. This is built just like presumably the 1981 world championship winning Ultima that Joel Johnson used to win the world championship at the age of 13. 
An interesting little detail on the release though, is that it's got a Trinity sticker on the side of the body and of course on the product listing. But at the time that this was originally used, Trinity was its own company. Now, Trinity as of recently was purchased by Horizon. So they at least were still able to put it on the body like it, you know, should be or was initially and on the website, but they did have to put a little fo footnote saying that Trinity is a you know, registered trademark of Horizon Hobby and all that. But small little detail worth noting maybe. And speaking of Kyosho, they've got another phaser release. This is a 1966 Chevy C10. A Another fantastically detailed body release on that phaser platform. The phaser platform, standard four wheel drive, plastic tub chassis, uh, you know, plastic dog bones and stuff like that. But it's still a lot of fun to drive. I've got two or three of them and the bodies that they put on top are unmatched as far as how good they look and the body options that they have to put on that platform. This is a cool one, you know, fleet side style box, Many will like it, probably not everybody, but I thought it looked pretty good. It surprised me to see. I haven't seen them do a truck of any sort yet that I, oh, I guess they did the Toyota Tundra, like the uh, drift style. So I guess they did do that one. This one, much more like street stock style. Pretty cool looking overall. And the 58th RTR release of the year. And speaking of RTRs, New one, kind of, from TWS. TWS released this, the VTG80. Now, if you remember, sometime last year, TWS released a CJ7, and it was just straight up called the CJ7. It wasn't as detailed with the roof and things like that. It looked okay, but not fantastic. However, when all of the Jeep licensing issues went down over the last four to six months, whenever it was, it disappeared. We didn't see anything else from them or any announcement, anything else that, it just disappeared. But now this is popping back up. It does have a higher price than it previously did, but they changed this considerably. They didn't just put a sticker over the front grill of it to kind of change up the look. This is a what looks like fairly new or redesigned body with a lot of detail. And I have to say that's probably one of the best looking CJ models in 110 scale that I've seen. I think that they did a fantastic job. It's got great little added details. The interior looks solid all around. This is a fantastic looking little truck. The only downside is, is that it's about a 10 inch wheelbase. So you have to like the short wheelbases or you're not gonna like this one. But beyond that, they did a fantastic job. These TWS CTS platforms are very much like the MST platforms. So if you've ever used one of those, the CFX, uh, it's gonna be very reminiscent of that to you. So overall, a platform that's made to hold a scale looking body and fit those proportions, not ultimately you know, aimed at performance, but I think they did a great job on the style of this one. If you'd like more information on it, I'll link to the TWS website. I believe that you can get TWS through our CMart, and I believe that they currently have it listed at the old price. So if you wanna get a bit of a deal on it before maybe they update the pricing, then it might be worth scooping up. Also, a bonus, you can get this in a RTR or a kit. Both are available. And we have a lone drag racing story for the week. Protoform released a 1 16th scale Nissan R35 GTR Pro Mod style. They had this body for the 1 10th scale. Now they downsized it. So you can get it for the 1 16th in case you want to have twinsies or you just only have 1 16th and you like the style. This Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, as always, come hang out with Matt and I for a live stream takeover show that sometime has some topics that have something to do with RC, a lot of other stuff generally included as well. Come hang out, join the chat, or you can of course watch after the fact. Same goes for Friday, Friday Night Live, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Sometimes I get something done. Most of the time I'm just sitting here interacting or answering questions that pop up in the chat. Good time as well. Last week I asked you guys how RC fit in your life, whether it was a pure stress reliever, or it could be a source of stress or a, you know, source of contention, depending on how much time you, you know, like to spend on it. And there was the, the wide variety of answers. 
of course there was some people who said, you know, that yeah, it can get in the way with how obsessive some of us can be at times. Others just be like pure relief, good for mental health, good to get out, good for a change or good for actual physical health with people who were using it as, you know, like actual physical therapy. Some really interesting stories and some comments in there that were absolutely worth reading. I appreciate all you guys for taking the time to put some of those in there. I enjoyed reading all of them. For this week, I'd like to know what's a tool that you'd like to add to your RC hobby, whether it be a, a you know manufacturing tool or a skill. What is that one tool that you would like to add next? Of course, I know there can be many, but what is that one tool you'd like to add next that would just make your journey in the RC hobby either that much easier or that much more enjoyable or just, you know, a struggle that you'd like to take on? be interested to hear what you guys have to say there. As always, I enjoy reading your comments every week. Put them down below. And if you enjoyed the Scan News update, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already, and hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. Once again, as always, thanks again for watching the Scan News update. We'll see you on the next one.